The first mm -hmm. words you give the AI are most important. So if you start with, can you, everything the AI is going to do is going to be operating from the position of answering that question, as opposed to getting to the task. Howdy, everyone. I'm your host, Todd ross -Needkirk. Until recently, I only dabbled in generative AI, mostly to keep up with the tech and to handle a few small tasks here and there. Then I talked with today's guest and I realized I had only scratched the surface of what was possible. My interactions with generative AIs like ChatGPT, Claude, or MidJourney were straightforward or one-offs. Quick requests, maybe a few follow-up questions or iterations, and then I went on with my day. I knew people were using Gen AI for in-depth research, persona building, and role-playing. I knew it was possible to build custom GPTs. We've built custom GPTs for clients. And I knew the savvier users maintained prompt libraries that they copied, pasted, and refined over time to get more out of their Gen AI use. What I didn't know, for example, is that you can ask an AI to remember a multi-step routine, name it, and then run that routine later using different data. Maybe you, I don't know, have a podcast and you create a process to help you write episode introductions like this one. The Gen AI asks you for an episode transcript and background information about the guest. You've already fed it previous episode intros, so it knows the format. And you've shared your brand voice and tone guidelines, so it knows how to sound. And maybe a few seconds later, it gives you something like this. In this episode, we dive deep into advanced AI strategies that can revolutionize how businesses leverage prompt engineering and generative AI. We explore practical techniques to make AI tools not just a one-off interaction, but a true asset to your workflow. From building sophisticated prompt sequences that streamline operations, to creating reusable AI scripts that guide your team through complex tasks, this conversation is packed with actionable insights. If you've ever wondered how to level up your use of AI in marketing, content creation, or business development, you won't want to miss this. Our guest today is Jennifer Jones Mitchell, the CEO and AI transformation leader at Human Driven AI. She describes herself as an AI futurist who specializes in using generative AI to humanize digital experiences. Jennifer has over 25 years of marketing experience and now helps businesses transform their operations with AI driven solutions. Together, we explore how she operationalizes AI to improve efficiency and drive growth while keeping human oversight and creativity at the core. Now, I didn't edit a word of that. It doesn't sound exactly like me. I wouldn't say you won't want to miss this in an intro, for example. But that's just the first iteration of a pre-programmed, repeatable routine. So let's pick up the conversation when I ask Jennifer to share a practical example of how she takes AI prompt engineering to the next level. And one of my favorite things to do with AI is what I call funnel thinking. So basically you start with a very broad prompt and then you refine and refine and refine and create a prompt sequence that you can actually tell the AI to then remember, name and run it in the future. So let me give you an example. Let's say we start with um, a very broad prompt of name the 20 biggest marketing conferences in the U.S. Very broad. So the AI will name those. Then you say, of those, which ones accept speaker pitches? And then it'll break it down to the ones that accept speaker pitches. Of those, which ones have the target audience whose job titles fit my you know, customer, my client, or myself? And you keep refining and refining until you get the absolute best target conferences that you would want to pitch to speak. Then you marry your brand. Oh, here's the little background on myself or my client and have it write the speaker pitches. Then tell the AI to name that prompt sequence Speakers Bureau and to remember it and run it whenever anyone wants to create a Speakers Bureau for speaker pitching. Now, my hmm. prompt sequence for this is about 23 prompts that I use um, to do this. And so the best part is, let's say you have a ChatGPT Teams account or Copilot Teams account, right? You've told the AI to remember that prompt sequence. Now, anyone on your team 
can go into that account and say, run the Speakers Bureau prompt. And the AI will ask you every question. At, we will prompt you to give it what it needs to complete that task. And this oh. is a way that you can have anyone on your team run that sequence and they won't miss a step because the AI prompts you. Does so you get sense? the AI to prompt you rather than you prompting the AI. Exactly. You have to train it first. Right. So is this so how does that how does that work in, in practice, though? I mean, is this a different kind of interaction? Let, let's use chat GPT as an example, because that's probably sure. the one that most people are, are, are familiar with. You open up chat GPT. Let's say you mm -hmm. have a Teams account, for example, you open up mm -hmm. chat GPT and you start to write a prompt. Is there something you do differently with that prompt in order to enter this space to create a multi step prompt that then asks you other than you planning ahead? You just no, no, you just you need to plan ahead what your steps are and okay. think through your steps of any task that you do that has multiple steps. So it could be building a content calendar. Um, mm. You know, to do that, you have to think through um, what are the hashtags, what are events that are coming up or product launches, things you want to promote. There are all these this information you have to give the AI in order for it to build that content calendar. But you can tell it. I want to build a content calendar to post three times a week on these specific platforms. And then you say, ask me everything you need until you have enough information to create this task. And it will ask you. And you can go through the whole thing of then giving it what it needs. And then at the end, you say, remember this sequence. Remember all of these steps. Name it, whatever you want to name it and run this whenever I ask. And it will say, got it. I will run this sequence. Whenever you ask, I will respond by asking these questions in order to get the information that I need. Once I have that information, I will create what you want. And that way, anyone on your team can run it and be prompted to give it what it needs. And this is called a sequence? I just call it a sequence. Um, that's oh, yeah. I, okay. It's, All right. <laughs> exactly. And and okay. and it's it's really the funnel th thinking with it, um, okay. where you start with that broad ask and you refine and refine. It's just like any task you would do, um, but so few people seem to know that they can train ChatGPT, Claude, Copilot, any of these to remember the tasks that they're doing, especially these uh -huh. multi-step tasks and have anyone on the team then run it. So that's this is actually something that hasn't come up so far this season in all of the conversations we've had about AI. The idea that you can train the tasks yes. that you want to perform. We've talked about training it in the sense of RAG, retrieval augmented generation, or sure. training its personality or something like that. But we haven't talked about training it to perform a series of tasks that it then prompts you to do that then mm -hmm. is rememberable, not just to you and your account, but rememberable to your team's account and across your organization. Yes. So when you're setting this up, do you, are you, are you setting it up using a real world example first? So for yes. example, okay, so you're, you're, you're doing something like, well, I want to run a campaign, um, about, uh, uh, I, I'm doing advertising for this specific movie that's that's coming out, uh, mm -hmm. a new Star Wars movie. For whatever reason, I picked probably because I'm staring at a bunch of Star Wars stuff on my desk in front of me. <laughs> uh, I, I'm doing an advertising campaign for a bunch of new for a, a new Star Wars movie, and you use that actual example, but it's quote smart enough to know that when you say rerun this, ask me everything that you need, it can abstract out the specifics. Yes. And then ask you the specifics in the future and it can substitute in anything else. It knows that it could be a car. It could be mm -hmm. a a technology and a new iPhone. It could be anything. Yes. I mean, it will ask you for those details. Going back to the first example of the Speakers Bureau, right? So uh, this is truly a prompt sequence that I have created and trained. But any time that I or anyone on my team goes in and says to ChatGPT, run the Speakers Bureau prompt, it will come back and ask, because remember I asked uh, for the, uh, what was it, the 20 biggest marketing conferences 
in the U.S. It will come back and first ask what types of conferences. It won't just assume that you want to run the same uh -huh. prompt sequence for those 20 conferences. It will say, what are the types of conferences? And then it will ask all these subsequent questions that it needs for you to refine and refine until you get to what you want. Um, it's funny because whenever I present this, uh, when a speaking engagement or I'm training clients, I always get gasps when they see <laughs> that you can train wow. it to do these tasks. But I, it, it, this is the biggest game changer that my clients are seeing um, because you think about how many tasks that we have every single day that mm. have multiple steps to them. Um, and to be able to not only have the AI complete it, but like I said, prompt you so that anyone on your team can run it without missing a step. I mean, that's it. It just it's incredible the results you get from it. What are some other examples of being able to create these these sequences or or tasks, these multi step things and being able to train an AI to to perform these over and over again? Well, I'll tell you, I don't know how multi-step this one is, but I love it so much. You've heard, of course, of role-playing, yes? Yes. Where you mm -hmm. tell the AI but please, to... please go on. Please explain, yes. Okay. Uh, well, role-playing, for anyone who doesn't know, you tell the AI, uh, you give it a perspective from which to think or create. So, for example, one of my favorite ones, if you have to, if you're working with really dense complex technical content and you need to turn that into something that is going to appeal to the masses then you could tell the ai you are a storyteller explaining this technical content and then it will adopt this narrative immersive storytelling kind of tone to even the most complex uh content well one of my favorite ones to do that I, I i always laugh because people gasp when they haven't thought of it you can tell the ai to think like your target customer and then you can brainstorm with the ai and until you get to that message that works i have a client who they operate more in the public affairs than PR area um, around renewable energy. So we are creating personas of opponents, people who don't want renewable energy development in their area. <laughs> Fantastic. And we are debating and discussing yeah. with the AI. Well, what about this issue? Would this turn you around? Would this turn you around? And I, I literally turn the AI around, the persona around on one specific topic. Really? Just in the course Con of yeah, just it. showing it, convinced it, yes, around the the um, property values, <laughs> um, that how it actually increases your property values to have uh, solar renewable um, energy, and uh, yeah, so I was showing my client how you can brainstorm. I've done it where because I, I also do still work in PR and have some PR clients, so I've done it where I practice pitches with personas of journalists. I feed the AI the, the journalist's uh, most recent articles so it understands what they like to write about, what they cover. And then I say, you know, what about this pitch? And I try different pitches until I get the one that the AI persona is interested in. I pitch the reporter and it works. I've done this with oh. clients as well, where I test my ideas with personas of my clients before I take it to them. So in your experience, the accuracy of the information you get back when you are having it adopt personas mm -hmm. and making b marketing decisions based on these personas, what has your experience been? Is it accurate on the whole? Have you found mistakes? And then how do you fact check that kind of information? Uh, it's a great question. Well, the outputs are always only as good as the inputs. So we all as marketers have our customer personas. We know their preferences, their likes, their dislikes. We, we, we know all of that, um, already. So as long as you anonymize it, so you're protecting your, your client, um, information, you can train it and say, this is this persona. Now I do like to ask it once I've trained it and I have, you know, persona number one, I will ask it to add additional insights based on what you know about this persona. What are some other um, preferences, 
ideas, going back to that client example, objections to renewable energy that I may not have outlined. You know, you want to kind of build it out even beyond because you have the opportunity to with this this tool. Um, but you always do want to have that human review to look at it and make sure, okay, this does, this doesn't jive, this fits or doesn't. I've had experiences where I've done that and created a subset of personas because it identified some additional things. And I'm like, oh, that's really good. But I want to make content. I want to have personalization targeting just that subset as opposed to the larger one. So you can keep drilling down and down on your personas to really get them as precise as you want them. Um, of course, you want to take it all with a grain of salt, just as you would with mm-hmm. the focus group. You know, um, mm-hmm. I've never been a big fan of in-person focus groups because people are so influenced by other people. And, you know, somebody may, oh, I'm not going to say that because it doesn't look like they want to hear it. Or <laughs> I like this person. They're the leader. I want to follow the lead. You know, we right, all. Yeah. A lot so, of group think and yeah. Exactly. Mm. So you have to, in the same way that a focus group, you have to con- consider that. I, mm. I do recommend you have that same kind of consideration with your AI personas. That said, you can have incredible conversations. It, you can have conversations with four Omni that are so real, you forget mm. you're talking to a, a, an AI bot. And what mm. I love about that one too, talk about telling it to remember different tasks, poor Omni remembers everything. So you can brainstorm, which I have done, and then said, hey, remember uh, three months ago, I had an idea to do this thing. And it'll, yes, I remember you had, we discussed doing this and exploring this tactic. And I was like, well, what if we added this extra layer to that tactic? And the AI will sit there and brainstorm with me and remember all these conversations. It's incredible. It's like having another employee, but one who is an expert in everything. (laughs) That's a theme that has come up. Now, what you've just said is, is an interesting version of something that has come up specifically on this podcast in the past, where we've had a previous guest frame AI as like having an intern to whom you can delegate tasks. But in this case, we're now saying it's like having an employee who's an expert in everything, which is, which is similar, but also very different. (laughs) Yeah, but it is both because all those tasks that take so much time that we hate Mm -hmm. doing, um, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I've got probably a dozen Google alerts that I just to stay on top of what's going on, but I don't always have time to read all of them. So I can just drop those links in perplexity because, and you want to use perplexity for this because it can actually go to the web and look at the links. So you drop the links and then I say, summarize all of the, this is another multi-step one where I just tell it to, I drop my links and say, run my Google alerts uh, sequence. And it Mm. will first summarize all of the articles, it will pull out the, it knows, I've told it which topics are of most interest to me. So it will pull out those topics. And then it for those topics, it'll summarize specifically with the the terms that I've given it, you know, I want to know who's quoted, I want to know, um, you know, any sources that are referred to in this and on all these different layers to it, again, starting with that, summarize it, and then refine and refine and refine. Mm-hmm. Um, so every morning, I get my Google alerts, I drop them into perplexity, I get my summaries, and I can act on that, either creating content or media pitches or whatever the results are from, you know, the the Google alerts. So Mm -hmm. it it just, there's so many tasks, if you think about it, that we delegate to interns (laughs) because they take a lot of time. Um, Or we need that SME, that subject matter expert, and... AI can play either role. It just depends on what you need it to do in each given moment. A tactic that I've seen some people use is building prompt libraries. Mm -hmm. And something that I've heard people talk about when trying to use AI tools smartly, more efficiently, is that they spend a lot of time hunting outside of those AI tools for good prompts. 
They may spend a lot of time on subreddits yeah. trying to find the right key to unlock that that thing. Is that something that you find yourself doing, either searching the internet for the right kind of prompt, the right kind of key to turn the door, or do you build your own prompt library, or yes. is there something else that you found that, that works just as well? No, I build my own prompt libraries. Um, and the reason I do this, especially for my clients, I mean, the process, just because anybody can replicate this, not that I'm trying to give my work away to people. But uh, I sit down with my clients. Uh, a lot of them are agencies, but in-house marketing teams as well. And I just interview first their group leaders and then the teams as a whole. And I talk about, you know, what are the time consuming tasks? What are the tasks you hate doing <laughs> that mm -hmm. you have to do? And we just talk through all of it until I capture those tasks that they need. Then I do. I, that's a deliverable I give to my clients. I build prompt libraries based on the tools that we've decided they as a company want to use. Um, so the, the library is usually an Excel spreadsheet and it's divided up by each department. So media relations, events, social media, et cetera. And I have the tasks, the prompts, um, the, the tool to use it on, as well as the data you need to give the AI because prompts can't work <laughs> without context, without that mm -hmm. additional information. Um, and I test all the prompts before I hand them off. That's the problem with a lot of the things that are online they're not always that great. Um, they yeah. really haven't always been tested. Um, sometimes, depending on the Reddit, the subreddit that you're in, they may be okay. But I prefer to customize for all of my clients and especially build those sequences so that I can mm. then tell them, this is a sequence you're going to run often. So name it this and and this is how you will use it going forward. Um mm. There really is an art and a science to prompt engineering. I just was talking to a client today. Uh, I can't remember the details now of what he was trying to do, but he was saying, yeah, I, I told it this was the prompt that I gave it, but it came back with all this additional stuff. And I said, well, you need to add, there was just three words that I was like, you need to add these three words to your prompt hmm. to so that it knows. It was something about directing it back to the source material. Um, I can't remember the details. This would be a much better anecdote if I did. But the point is, every word you give the AI matters. And that's yeah. that's so important with prompt engineering. You know, I always start my trainings off with a really bad prompt to show people what not to do. So that example is, let's say you want to ask ChatGPT to summarize a thousand survey responses and give you the results. Um, so the bad prompt would be, can you summarize all of these survey responses for me and show me some interesting findings, please? That's a terrible prompt. Oh, Starting yeah. with can you, the first mm. words you give the AI are most important. So if you start with can you, everything the AI is going to do is going to be operating from the position of answering that question as opposed to getting to the task. It's going to be, yes, I can. And it may get into its process of how it does this, how it analyzes oh. this or whatever. So you don't want to say, can you? You want to say, summarize this. You don't want to say all of these survey responses for me because it's pattern recognition. So the AI is just going to be bouncing around trying to find patterns off of those useless words. And then that prompt also said, show it me takes some. this thing literally that we use as a rhetorical device. Yes. AI uh -huh. doesn't understand nuance. It doesn't understand ambiguous language. Um, mm. The other part of that prompt to say, uh, show me some interesting key findings. Well, some is useless because what does that mean? Five, 10, a million? You want to be specific. Yeah. Interesting to whom? How? Yeah. Without context, that's not a helpful word in your prompt. Now, you could say unexpected findings, surprising findings. Um, so it, it word choice is so important in your prompts. It, mm. it really is the difference between mediocre outputs and something that is on brand, compelling, and, and truly, truly something that will achieve whatever goal you're trying to achieve. 
Um, it's an art and a science. There's something I've noticed about prompts, and <clears throat> maybe this has been solved in the text-based AI AIs, mm -hmm. but it's still a problem in a lot of the image generation AIs that I've come across, and that is when you specifically tell it to not do something, mm -hmm. it will do that. Yeah. So, for example, image generation stuff, I, I've been working with a lot of these lately because we're we're really experimenting with the idea of using more AI-generated imagery in our own works as, as an agency for our own marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll probably have some anecdotes about that a little later on. But one of the problems that AI has still really cannot quite get the right number of fingers down. And yes. that's always a, a giveaway, and it's always really awkward once you see that. And so I have found myself as I'm doing these iterations of images, and it starts to get into a bad loop of hands appearing, and I start to tell it, don't show any hands, or the hands aren't visible, or something like that in the prompt. The As soon as I say that, the next round, the next iteration of that all the hands show up now yes. everybody's hands Multiple are in the air there's yeah. so many hands <laughs> there are more hand there there are four times as many hands as people yes and for some reason and even some and this is where it gets really frustrating there are some image generation well at least one image generation tool i'm aware of ideogram where they have a specific field that is a a negative prompt yes. that's separate from the main prompt where you theoretically you can go in there and say I don't want any of the following things and it's its own separate field mm -hmm. and you can put hands in that and it will still do this oh so it will still do it it will still do it or it just ignores <laughs> it like I I don't really know wow. what the point of that thing is but so in the image generation stuff at least in my experience this still seems to be an issue where if you it's kind of like you know, he doth protest too much, where if you say, I don't want it, suddenly it's like, well, he, you know, he said something about it. He must really want this thing to show up. <laughs> Is that still a problem in the text-based generation? Are you finding that where it's like, don't say you don't want something to happen because it certainly will. Oh, it's definitely not a problem in text-based generation. You can absolutely okay. say the and and even in the images, use the word exclude. Instead exclude. of saying, don't show this, use the word exclude. I'm old enough to remember searching the internet with Boolean logic. I don't know if yeah. you, if you mm -hmm. are, but yeah, you almost want to take that Boolean. And, yeah. Exactly. Plus this, yeah. minus this. Um, so exclude. yeah, you almost want to okay. take that kind of approach. Yeah, but that's the thing. You wouldn't know that unless you just played and played yeah. the way the way I have with, with prompts. <laughs> I don't have a lot of experience iterating with text in AI because, and I think this is just a personal bias, I very rapidly tend to take things out of text AI and and get to a human editing yes. workflow. That's just yes, how please. I operate. You know, I, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Uh, but when it comes to image generation, something that mm -hmm. I learned only recently, and I'm probably very late to the game on this, is... I would go to these tools, these AI image generation tools, and they always have a big splash page when you arrive of these beautiful images that you just cannot believe that an AI would generate. And mm -hmm. so many of them allow you to click on them and see the prompt that was used. And it's always this super short, simple prompt. And you think, <laughs> what? You know, and you try plugging that thing in yourself and you get a very whatever image. And you wonder how on earth What's wrong with me that I can't get the same kind of result that allegedly this other user got? They got this beautiful thing from this very simple sentence. And it took me a while to realize, well, they sat there for a long time mm -hmm. and they went through, you know, they got their four up and they picked this thing and they tweaked it and they picked that thing and they tweaked it and they went through, I don't maybe a hundred iterations to eventually arrive, you know, nudge by nudge by nudge. Yeah, that may have been the seed prompt, but they have been poking this thing and nudging this thing for maybe two hours mm -hmm. to arrive at this thing that they got that that they finally said, all right, that's good enough. I'm I'm good to go. 
and the power of that iteration that the people are actually sitting there putting a real work into into deciding oh, yeah. how to do this and experimenting and backing up and trying again and backing up and trying again and when we have started to experiment with creating pixel art style in our brand colors and and all of that i would i would do one prompt and look at it and think oh these are all awful try a totally different prompt oh these are all awful try a totally different prompt oh i hate all of this i give up <laughs> well i finally started like well okay i'm gonna try something click this maybe change a couple of words in the prompt it lets you do that little slider of like how heavily do you want to weight your new prompt against the old one right and then you start to fiddle highlight this part of the image and focus on this thing and you keep playing with it and playing with it and you can start to see that well, now it's starting to move in this direction and there's something mm -hmm. about this new thing where, well, it's starting to really focus on on this person in that image and like, well, I kind of like that direction. Let's keep going in that direction. That's the image example. Mm -hmm. Do you find that happening in text as well with marketing copy that there's a that there's a, a similar kind of thing with iteration or do you find that with text, the workflow is a little bit different and you get a certain result and you think. All right, I'm good with this. Now I want to take this into human editing land. Well, again, it goes back to training the AI um, because you can train the AI to write in your different client styles, um, in their voices. So uh, in your own voice, um, you can train it. You know, once you've taught it and you're able to say, write this bylined article in RD's voice, because I always use initials for my clients. And in <laughs> fact, I'm so paranoid, I flip their initials. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um, but uh, but you, I could say, write this in RD's voice. Um, and I've already trained it on that voice. So I don't have as many iterations. But if you don't give it the context, if you don't tell it what audience it's writing for, if you don't give it, um, but I've got this formula that works really well, actually, where I give it the role, the goal, and the assignment. So the role is the perspective from which to write. And you can tell it to write from the perspective of a client. So I've got an example here uh, that I use in my trainings where I've made this fake herbal tea called nature's brew and i give the ai the role saying you are an herbal tea called nature's brew and i give it just a couple of lines about the product including you are like the best friend whose humor helps everyday stresses fade away so the role then the goal you're promoting your herbal teas to help families get through the stress of the holidays so the mm -hmm. role the goal then the assignment Write 20 eye-catching, clever headlines for social media ads on Instagram and Facebook, promoting nature's brew for busy moms. When you give it the role, the goal, and the assignment, you are giving it the context that it needs to create something that won't require a lot of iterations, I promise you. So that example, my two favorite results from that, calm the crazy with nature's brew, it's cheaper than therapy and tastes better too, or... <laughs> Holidays a grind, reset and unwind with nature's brew. Sanity is just a steep away. Is that not the best tagline for an herbal tea right there? Sanity is just a steep away. Now, it came up with these because I gave it the role, the goal, and the assignment. It all comes down to the context is my point. If you want clever, creative, even funny, outputs that don't require multiple iterations you have to give it enough context so that it can deliver what you ultimately want i i have to search for that real quick i'm sorry <laughs> i just have to i know because if nobody's using it somebody should it's if that were it's a real not client, it's not in use I know I haven't seen it anywhere and if that were a real client that would be their tagline See, i would insist so on it one of my one of my favorite stories about chat gpt is now this is an early days this was probably december of what is that 22 like mm -hmm. when it a when month it after yep. when it first launched and everybody went oh no right yep. i cracked the thing open and i was like i'm gonna give it a little assignment 
I'm going to have it write an out of office email, which is, I think I mentioned earlier in the conversation, I'm going to have it write an out, out of office autoresponder. And mm. the prompt I gave it was something along the lines of, uh, I, I run a, a web design company. I'm going to be on vacation. I want an autoresponder. That's a little bit funny, but friendly and include a joke. And it wrote a thing that was you know, pretty good. It was maybe a little too goofy. And then it had a joke about web design. And it, was, it wasn't like a great joke, but it was an actual joke about web design that made sense. That was a joke about web, like a real joke about web design. Yeah. And so I prompted, <laughs> well, we'll wait. And I, so I prompted it at, again, like, well, I don't love that joke. So I said, well, this is good. Try another joke. And it gave me another joke. It was not as even good as that one. So they're starting mm-hmm. to go a little downhill. And I was like, oh, okay, give me another joke. And then it gave me another one. It wasn't even, as, so they were getting like worse, but they were all actual real jokes about web design. And I thought, well, okay, I'll just go find one on my own. So I searched for jokes about web design. Mm-hmm. First result were all of those jokes in <gasps> order oh no i found the source material wow. that it was trained on that so amazing. at that point it was very like you know don't look behind the curtain very oz right mm-hmm. and but in a way so there was a moment where like the magic trick was ruined mm-hmm. because okay this thing wasn't inventing humor it wasn't understanding how to write a joke it knew how to find a joke. But at the same time, I had to immediately remind myself, what was I doing? I wasn't writing a joke. I was trying to find a joke. Yes. I was doing the same thing that it was doing. I was no better than it. I wasn't sitting there trying to construct a joke in the moment. I like I'm not a I wasn't writing. So anyway, uh, so that I found the source material in this case, however, there is no source material. Yes. How did it know that there's sort of a play on words about step away, steep away? Like mm-hmm. it has well, a bit I, of rhyme ish to it. It's exactly that's very good. I, it, that's again, very good. it's all how you prompt it. Honestly, once I figured out the role, the goal, the assignment, it changed everything because it forces you as the prompter to give the AI the context that it needs to actually create something new as opposed to just um, be like auto correct or auto complete and finding the most likely next word, but rather creating something new. So that's why I keep saying it's an art and a science. You have to understand how to give the right direction while still protecting your client's IP and, you know, not not putting anything at risk, because we don't know how OpenAI and Anthropic and all these companies are using the inputs that you give them. So you have to anonymize, you have to, you know, make sure you're protecting your clients and your company. But give it the role, the goal, the assignment, and it forces you to give it the context to get something new. I also love that example because I have had some clients where when I start off training them and I'm I'm brought in first to say, okay, I'm going to help transform this agency into, you know, an AI first uh, agency. There's always usually in the the creative department, somebody who's like, AI can't be funny. AI can't be clever. And I love showing that example because yes, it can, if you know how to instruct it. That was part one of my conversation with Jennifer Jones Mitchell, the CEO and AI transformation leader at Human Driven AI. Please join us next time when we discuss how companies like MasterCard and IHG, the hotel company, are using AI agents to act quickly on real-time data and engage with customers in ways humans simply can't. We'll also touch on the future of AI jobs and why understanding AI is crucial to staying ahead in today's rapidly evolving job market.